So you have to explain to me what's going on. I mean, I'm assuming that this is where all the yeast is growing? Yep, this is where the process starts. Um, so the uh, funny thing is this is basically how a home brewer would grow yeast at home at the beginning. Um, but you know, we start with completely sterile media um, and inoculate a small flask with a, a small amount of yeast and, and let it grow for 24 hours, step that up, split out into other cultures, let that grow. So it's just a, a process of continuing to feed and then the yeast continues to grow and multiply. And it takes like roughly four or five days to get to like that maturity point where it's ready to be packaged? There's uh, other species of yeast used in brewing that can take longer than that, but uh, for a typical brewing strain, it's five or six days turnaround. So the yeast cells are kind of growing on a medium, like in these little petri dishes, essentially. This plate contains auger, which is like a seaweed derivative that just gives you kind of a solid base, but within this is also dissolved a bunch of yeast nutrients. Uh, so when you scrape some yeast onto this plate, they'll grow up into okay. these little colonies. So each time you see like a little dot on a plate, that is essentially a, a colony of yeast that arose from a single cell that was deposited on that spot. So how many yeast cells would you estimate are in one of those dots? Well over a million cells in one of those dots. You know, one cell becomes two, becomes four, becomes eight, becomes 16, and they can double, you know, every hour and a half. So you're, you're getting exponential growth. Wow. So from here, do you kind of scrape all of that off and put it in one of these flasks? Right, we do an aseptic transfer to make sure that we're only transferring the microbes we want. So yes, we'll use a sterile loop to scrape cells off of this plate and uh, swizzle it into a flask and that starts the whole process. You can use all sorts of different things to grow yeast, but it's almost like they have a memory. And uh, so you want to grow them on what they're going to see and they'll perform better for the brewer. Our entire process, we use wort. It's the medium that it's going to see when it gets to the brewer. So it performs best if we've grown it in that same medium. All these little yeast cells are all excited. They're about to they're, be consumed. Yes, we're, we're taking them from, you know, a million cells to trillions of cells in the matter of five or six days to send it off to the brewer. It's amazing to really think about just the way that we've kind of culturally as human beings kind of captured these, these single-celled organisms to do all of these wonderful fermentation tasks yes. for us. And unwittingly, essentially. We didn't know what they were until the late 1800s, and, but we've been using yeast for, you know, I mean, millennia. What do you call this other area? Uh, wort production. Wort production. Yeah. All right, let's go check out the wort production. All right. The brewer's job in making beer is to essentially create a growth medium for yeast. So they're taking starches and malt and converting those into sugars that ultimately the yeast are going to be able to consume. So when you get to that stage, you've cooled down the wort and you add the yeast, the yeast goes to work consuming the sugars and they'll uh, use that sugar as a, an energy source to, to make more yeast. The byproduct of that is alcohol and carbon dioxide. The brewer makes the wort and the yeast makes the beer. So when I first came in and we walked into this room, I thought all of these were standard brewing tanks, but they're not. This is where the yeast is really starting to multiply. Right, this is where we get the big numbers. It's a giant version of what you saw in the lab. It's just a, a big tank and instead of a little magnet inside, we've got a giant fan, you know, pushing things around and scrubs the CO2 out that the yeast is producing, uh, keeps them up and in contact with the nutrients so they'll grow faster and to a higher, uh, higher cell count. How interesting. I'm starting to see a little bit of a theme with the names of your tanks. Why don't you tell us about that? We've got McGill and Goodman over here. We've got Loblaw, Matlock, Mason, and Hutz. So if you put it together, these are all fictional lawyers. It's, it's kind of a nod to our uh, background. You couldn't leave the law behind. We couldn't, so now you know, I have to see it every day. <laughs> and remind you of what you left. Of my humble roots. <laughs> I love it. And so in here, that's just more of the wort that yeah. you've created. Yeah, so we use the big boil kettles to produce uh, you know, large volumes of wort that uh, end up in these tanks to grow ever more yeast. When the yeast is done growing, the mixers get turned off and the yeast all just settles, settles to, the, to bottom. the bottom. Then we can get rid of our beer. 
whereas a brewery is wanting to keep the beer, we want to keep the yeast. So we get rid of our beer, which would be very oxidized and gross beer. It is drinkable, but it's not good. You don't tell people you're uh, throwing away beer. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know. So then we drain all that beer out and then package the yeast and send it out to the customers all over the country. I love it. I bet when the brewers get their shipment of yeast, they're like, yay. Yeah, kid on Christmas. <laughs> yeah.